how a poor country could become rich. That also happened to be about one of the aims of life, one of the Purusharthas, which is called Artha. The second thing that bothered me was corruption. So I uh, decided to interrogate the Mahabharat because Mahabharat is obsessed with Dharma and one of the dimensions of corruption is the moral failures. And so that was the book called The Difficulty of Being Good. So that's the second aim of life, Dharma. The third thing that bothers me and I think it bothers all of us and probably more than anything else is desire. And so it was natural to, to write about karma and, and karma, it so happens, India is the only civilization in the world which has elevated karma to a goal of life. And, and so it was an amazing adventure because I had access to Sanskrit sources and to go back to the past and to make it relevant into the, and the one present. Of, one of, can you hear me? Ah. One of the things that you portray in the book very well is how the ancient traditions in India are very optimistic about karma. And in the poetry and in the Bharatiya Kavya Shastra, it is all written in a very uh, positive way. So can you talk a little bit about your sources and the optimism of the Indian tradition? Well, you know, um, I, I I think I'm the first person who has actually said that the present day prudishness that we suffer from when we talk about sex and love, etc. We blame the British, the Victorians, but actually we've always had a strand of karma pessimism. So I, while we have the karma optimists, karma optimists were the ones who were the ones who uh, 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 realized that, uh, well, we wouldn't wake up in the morning if we didn't have desire. And they realized that karma is the source of procreation. But also, karma is the source of creation. Mm. And so they elevated the goal of life. Not only that, they created a god named Karma. Uh, in fact, I believe today in Bangalore, this is the right place, we should change the name of Valentine's Day to Kama Deva Divas. <laughs> <laughs> Bangalore suffer, suffered more at the hands of the Hindutvas because of this. Yes. And all these Romeo squads in UP and all, you know. <laughs> so it's the right time. Let's just change the name. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, the point here is that we blame the British, but actually, while we had the Kama optimists who, uh, you know, the Kama Sutra, the sculptures at Khajuraho and so on, but we always had the Kama pessimists. Mm. In India, the renouncer is a hero. So whether it was the yogi, it started actually in the Upanishads, whether the yogi or the Buddha, the rishis, the Jains. Oh my God, you read the Buddha Charita and the Briddha Katha from the Jains, and you realize how pessimistic they are. And so we had our karma optimists, we had our karma pessimists, they were always in conflict. And then came a grand compromise in our history, where, which was karma realists, who said basically that sex is all right as long as it's within marriage. Yes. So this compromise all over the world, it took place. And in India, it was written up in the Dharma Shastras. Mm. The book is structured in an interesting way. I don't know how many of you have read it. It is a, a fictional narrative which kind of has tangential forays into the idea of karma, the philosophies of karma. And uh, Gursharan, I want to ask you about, as a writer, what were the challenges of structure? Why did you do this? Why did you...? Well, I quickly realized that you can't talk about desire 
without a story. Hmm. You know, you can't just do a philosophical essay yes. on desire. So I had to create a story. And it's a, it's a fictional memoir about Amar, who is an older man. Please, it's Amar is not me. <laughs> <laughs> the, I get this question everywhere. In, in fact, Barkhadat in ref refused to admit that it's a fictional character <laughs> in Delhi launch. Anyway, the way, let me give you a flavor of how it works. So, the narrator is remembering his first memory of desire. He's four years old and he wakes up early in the morning and he's feeling cold and lonely and he rushes to his mother's bed and he jumps into the bed and nestles beside his mother and falls blissfully asleep. And so the narrator stops the story at this moment and he says, well, you know, karma strikes early in life, but it can also strike early in a civilization. So unlike the Christian tradition, where in the beginning was light, Genesis, in the Rig Veda, in the beginning was karma, and the cosmos was created from the seed of desire in the mind of the one. So, unlike the, so the question that the narrator asks is, what does it say about a civilization where in the beginning was desire? So that sets up, that sets up the question of the book. And the rest of the book is trying to answer this question. But, um I don't think we should go into the Wendy Doniger's interpretation that Indian civilization began with Brahma's love for his daughter. It began with incest, but... Well, we that also is a story of creation. Yes. In fact, uh, absolutely. And so not only that, it was also meant to compensate us for bringing up children. The human infant is the most infuriatingly difficult infant to raise. No other animal has so much difficulty as we do. So this is another compensation for the pleasure of sex. Anyway, Prajapati's story is yes. a very simple one. It's a story when he feels alone, he, he splits himself into two and he f gives birth to a woman and then he feels desire for the woman. He, and the woman says, hang on, he just gave birth to me. How can he feel, this? he's my father. How can he feel desire for me? And she runs away and he runs after her. She turns into a doe, he becomes a deer. They copulate and the deer population is created. Then she becomes a cow. He becomes a bull, yes. they copulate, and the cow population is created. <laughs> and similarly, and human beings created. all the way down to ants. Yes. And that, of course, is if you are going to have sexual uh, basis for progeny, you, it has to be incest yes. from yes. one. Yes. It has to be that way. It's both a prism and a very macro view of how creation, the creation myth. So I have read two books which follow this format. One is uh, The Social Animal by David Brooks and the other is Gursharan Das's book. I have to say that this one is better in terms of its structure and the way it is composed. Uh, Gursharan, we have to talk about the cover and we have to talk about affairs. We have a lot, lot to talk. So, uh, so, 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 you know, India is the only civilization that raised karma to a goal of life, but also created a god called karma. And that's why I suggested we change Valentine's Day. And this beautiful cover actually brings this idea out beautifully, because karma has a bow 
made of sugar cane, string made of be honey bees, and he shoots these flowers like arrows at his victims. And so the first stage is when the two people meet and there is fascination. A white... Sorry, a w let me hold. Yeah. A, 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 a white lotus. Then the red flower of the Ashoka tree is when they decide to do something about it. The jasmine flower is the third stage of desire when they actually, there is intimacy, they may be married, they may be in an affair or whatever. And then desire after many years or many months begins to wane and you get the fourth stage which is the blue lotus. And finally the sandalwood flower is the death of karma and which is in the Buddhism Mara. It is Maran, the death of karma. I've heard this and one of the things that strikes me as interesting is how in India somehow we have segregated widows colors as white and in this it is the color of uh, light and color of love in the, in the flower. Right. It is the and so let's to, 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 to now this uh, we are, we, we are now in the story at this stage of life. Mm. Amar has been married, happily married for more than a dozen years. He has two lovely daughters. He's happy in marriage, but desire has waned. And he comes to office one day and he's feeling discontented. And so he asks himself, is this what life was all about? And the following week, he takes the Deccan Queen from Bombay VT to Pune. And in walks a beautiful woman, resembling, by the way, Catherine Deneuve, <laughs> who <laughs> <laughs> who I have always thought as a heartthrob. <laughs> <laughs> and so her name is Amaya and very quickly they, 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 have a, they begin to converse very formally in the beginning but slowly they, you can tell there's chemistry. They're both attracted to each other. They're both attracted to each other and they Their conversation becomes more intimate and by the end of the journey it is quite clear that they may have an affair. You should read that section because it is a, a, a wonderful meditation on the pros and cons and what eventually happens which we won't give away. So, so, so what does he think? Uh, it's very important Shobhas. Mm. What goes on in his mind, bec he says if he has an affair it will destroy his marriage. And he really values his wife, the person he, who means the most to him. He knows he will hurt her. He says, and he loves his children, and he says, maybe for the sake of the children, he shouldn't have an affair. But then he says, oh, but the, these wretched children are going to grow up and go away. And, and, and then, but if he ignores them, they'll never forget it, and, never re and always remind him. And then he says, maybe we could keep the affair a secret. Now, what will happen then? He says, I'll have to lie. And lies will have to be piled upon more lies. And pretty soon, I will become inauthentic. Yes. And what if somebody finds out, my God, that came my way? And I'll resent my family for the reason why I didn't do it. And I may end up as an old, shriveled, mean man. And what does this say? That in this term, if karma, if dharma is a duty to another, to my wife, karma is a duty to myself. Yes. 
And do I betray her or do I betray myself? And the fact is, there is no answer. What businessmen call win-win, this is a lose-lose. <laughs> there, it's, it's one of those dilemmas which has no answer. And this is why the Kama Sutra, actually, Shobha, the Kama Sutra says that a, a man sees a beautiful woman and he's attracted to her. A woman sees a, a handsome man and she's attracted to him. But then after some consideration, the matter goes no further. You know, the Kama Sutra, we all think it's a book of sexual positions. Far from it. The Kama Sutra is a book of manners, of good manners. For example, it, it says to you that talk, don't talk about yourself, talk about her. Don't speak in Sanskrit, talk in, in the language of the people, Prakrit. Otherwise, they, she'll think you're a show-off. Give her pleasure first before you think of your own pleasure. Now, isn't this good advice for all of us? <laughs> Unless you're in the red couch and you talk about him. <laughs> no, but Gursharan... So, so, yes, you asked me the question that, yes. about... Yes. yes, time's running out. And you asked me the question that there are amazing stories, frankly. And one of my, and, and the Mahabharata is full of them. And, 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 and there's one story in the Mahabharata that you Which were referring to. Which is my favorite. Yes. Her story is a story about uh, when Yudhishthir asks Bhishma, who gets more pleasure from sex, a man or a woman? Well, Bhishma says, well, you have to be a man and a woman to answer that question. And then he remembers that there was a king named Bhangashwana who was spent half his life as a man and then he became a woman. And so, the, uh, at the end of his life, he's been a good person and so he's given a choice. Would you like to be reborn as a man or a woman? And he says, as a woman. And people say, are you crazy? You could be the emperor of the earth and you want to be born as a lowly woman? And he said, no. A woman enjoys sex more than a man. And frankly, the emotional life is far more important than the public life. This is why E.M. Foster wrote two chairs for democracy. That is, the private life is more important than the public life. And so, I think we are actually uh, at a historic moment in our history. If we got our economic, if we got our political, you know, we say we got our independence in 1947. Well, we only got our political independence in 1947. We only got our economic independence from 1991. But now, in 2018, we are about to get our emotional or sexual independence. And why do I say that? This is because of four wonderful verdicts in the last few months of the Supreme Court. The verdict which has decriminalized homosexuality, it has decriminalized adultery, it has created a wonderful privacy law, you've had triple talaq, and you have an given entry of women to temples. So, what I'm trying to, and me too, sorry, most important, more important than the Supreme Court, is the Me Too movement. Because, you know, we always, we talk about our economic lives and political lives, but we never talk about our sexual lives. And what Me Too has done is has brought up it. And, and you know, at a time when globalization is under attack from Trump, from Brexit, from many sources, here is form of globalization of ideas which is sweeping the world. I mean, there's a Me Too movement in Kazakhstan. Can you believe it? 
So, I think this Me Too movement is not going to go away. And so, we should celebrate not only Kama Deva Divas, but we are at the cusp of history. We have three minutes. And let me just uh, take a couple of questions. Yes. So, you have written a book on Earth, Dharma, Kam. So, can we expect a book on Moksh soon? Yeah. <laughs> No. <laughs> I'm sorry, you have to actually experience moksha. Over I've experienced karma, I've experienced artha, and I've experienced dharma, but I have not experienced moksha. <laughs> In fact, it's the problem is my education. I was educated in a very liberal environment, and uh, Anyways, so that's the Mo quick answer. Moksha is surrendering or… Sorry? Uh, moksha involves surrender, is that what you Well, think? Moksha, or you know, one of the things I talk about, we haven't talked about it, is surrender. And it's really the idea that the romantic love was born on three continents at the same… Thank you, Gusharan. Thank you, Shobha.